Good evening. Uh, calling this meeting to order for the Brawley City Council and successor agency to the Brawley Community Redevelopment Agency. Regular meeting uh, for Tuesday, December 19th at 6 p.m. We can have the roll call, please. Mayor Nava. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Wharton. Here. Councilmember Howdigy. Here. Councilmember Hamby. Here. Councilmember Couchman. Here. All right, thank you. Next item on the agenda is the invocation by Pastor Tom Charlton from the Full Gospel Church. <laughs> Mayor, council members, staff, and it's good to see that many people out here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look to the Lord. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness, for your love, and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, how blessed we are to be able to have a meeting to guide our own city. Lord, we ask tonight that you would give council members all the initiative that they need, all the knowledge that they need, all the wisdom they need to conduct the business of our city. We ask your blessing upon them, and we ask the blessing upon the audience. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Next is our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Council Member Howdy, would you lead us then? Yes, please. Ready? Begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, council member. You're welcome. The next item on the agenda is item one, approval of the agenda. And there is an item on the agenda. Is it item 4A? Yeah, 4A is yeah, the allied waste. Are we going to oh, okay. Yes, yeah. you're uh, wishing to make a change to that item? Right. I, I believe uh, Republic Services has requested to uh, postpone that consideration. Am I correct in that? Um, Steph would like to note on the record that a CPI adjustment will become effective as of January 1, 2018, with reference to the uh, increase in rates due to implementation of SB1. They have indicated that they are withdrawing that request at this time. Okay. So is there a motion uh, to approve the agenda with that uh, change in regular business? So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Motion and a second. Any discussion by council? Mr. Mayor, I would like to request that uh, item 4B uh, be postponed to maybe the next meeting, just so uh, I could have some more time to process the information regarding the uh, potential uh, discussion, potential action regarding the uh, Brawley Adams Family Housing Project. There's just been a, a lot of information to process in my short time on the council. I'm, I'm making that request. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, if I could, if I could add to that, Council Member um, Hamby, do we have any representatives? Um, we do have present here the Director of Finance as well as Project Manager. But first I'd like to get uh, some uh, questions answered. With respect to a decision um, on this item, is there, uh, would a delay uh, hurt the, the project? Uh, there is a pending deadline. If, if we could have um, Krishat maybe for a moment, the deadline uh, is early January. January 16, 2018. Okay. And so if the city did not proceed with the item as presented, they would change their project approach and the application. They may not have enough time to amend it, but I would leave it to the applicant to describe what impact it may have on their preparation. Would, would there be consideration, and I'm uh, addressing council as a whole, um, maybe um, we can certainly table, but maybe take the opportunity to hear it since it is agendized, get more questions answered here in the public meeting, and we can still table and bring it back at the next council meeting if, if that would be acceptable. Sure. That's, that sounds good to me. Great. Yeah. So there's a, a motion and a second. And we will discuss item 4B, and re it'll remain on the agenda. It'll be discussed and uh, potentially tabled, uh, depending on, on council action. All those in favor for approving the uh, agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is item number two, public appearances and comments. Not to exceed four minutes, this is the time for the public to address the council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. 
The mayor will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, please state your name for the record. You are not allowed to make personal attacks on individuals or make comments which are slanderous or which may invade an individual's personal privacy. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. Is there anyone here from the public that would like to make a public appearance or has a comment for the City Council? <clears throat> Please come up. Thank you. Marjo Mello, Library Director. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. And in that spirit, I just want to let everybody know that this Thursday at 530 at the Library Branch, which is in the, on the corner of Eastern and I Street, um, Santa uh, will be there along with a story time, lots of cool crafts. Um, you can get a free picture with Santa taken. And we just want to invite everybody for our, I think it's our last big event of the year. Fantastic. So, yes. What time so we is just that, want to invite Marta? everybody. It's at 5.30. 5.30. And it's at the branch, 1501I, <laughs> the Del Rio School where the easternmost building. And actually, if you go on I Street, at the gate, it says library open. We always put a hanging sign up there when we are open. So, Marjo, is that put on by the library? It's by the put city? on by the library, okay. yes. All right, thank you. Well, You're thank welcome. you for the information. I appreciate it. Hopefully uh, many people do attend and take advantage of that. Thank you. Is there any other public comments uh, or public appearances? Any members of the public? Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Ruby Walla. Um, as the interim Parks and Rec Director, follow Marjo, just to let everybody know that um, on behalf of the Parks and Rec Commission in the City of Brawley, we will be hosting a movie night at the Lions Center this Friday. Doors open at 5.30, the movie starts at 6 o'clock, and um, popcorn and water will be provided. Um, everyone's welcome, free admission. Um, you just bring um, blankets, chairs, and, and um, so forth to be comfortable. And you may also bring your own goodies if, or refreshments if you'd like as well. What movie is showing? The Grinch That Stole Christmas. There we go. Grinch All right. Stole Christmas. Okay. Thank Biography you. of Sam Couchman. Nice. <laughs> I'm a great Christmas person. I'm a great person. Thank you very much, uh, Ruby, for that information. And if you can uh, please, uh, if you have a flyer and you can send it uh, to council, would be greatly appreciated for both events. And then maybe we can distribute that via social media. So thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to item. 2A, that's introduction of Brawley Police Officer Diana Diaz and Police Sergeant Luis Sanchez by Interim Police Chief Kelly Brown. Chief, how are you? I am well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, Kelly Brown, Interim Chief of Police. Uh, tonight, it gives me pleasure to, to come before you. Uh, as we all know, there's been uh, a little bit of change up in the police department across the street, and um, we have had the opportunity to promote uh, as well as hire, and I get to introduce tonight uh, Sergeant Luis Sanchez. Sergeant Sanchez grew up in the Hemet area where he attended high school and then uh, went on to attend the uh, Riverside Sheriff's Department's uh, training academy at Ben Clark. Um, once he graduated there, he was hired with us in 2008 as a police officer and then promoted to the rank of agent in 2012. In the time that Luis has been employed with the city, he's held uh, several positions, as I'm sure each of you have had the opportunity to interact with him. Um, one of the most notable uh, positions that he's held is as a school resource officer and explorer coordinator, working with the youth of our community, where he's really uh, done very well for, for the youth and, and shown uh, them the uh, right direction in life and uh, taking troubled youth and and pointing them in the correct direction. Um, he's also served as a field training officer uh, and uh, spent a short period of time as our housing authority officer as the liaison between the police department and housing authority. Uh, in October of this year, uh, he uh, participated in the promotional uh, process. Uh, shortly thereafter, he was named uh, as an acting sergeant and assumed the responsibilities as a patrol uh, shift supervisor. And with the uh, resignation of a sergeant here last week he was named as a permanent sergeant and so with that i introduce to you sergeant luis sanchez thank you it's uh, i'm very excited and uh, i look forward to continue to serve the city of brawley fantastic well done. congratulations uh sergeant sanchez congratulations yeah. very much thank you any comments from the city council 
Just a quick one for me. Um, congratulations, well deserved. Um, I, again, these things, uh, a lot of people don't know the process. Um, it's not so subjective that actually you go through um, written examination, there's interview process, there's scoring, um, as well as the um, exemplary um, service that you've provided <coughs> the city. So well recognized and uh, really look forward to you being out there leading the troops, uh, Sergeant. So Thank congratulations. Sergeant Sanchez, congratulations on your promotion, and thank you so much for all your work in the past and everything you've done for the schools and, and uh, for the youth, especially working with the youth. And uh, we, I wish you very much success, and hopefully you'll stay with the city of Brawley, your beautiful city, for a long period of time. Thank you. And congratulations, Sergeant. Uh, I know you see me out there all the time at the schools, especially. You've done some real good work there. Uh, my grandson speaks highly of you from eighth grade uh, at the elementary schools when you were there. I think you, but Phil Swing, I think, is where you had a lot of contact with him. Uh, and so I know you're doing a job out there. I, I, I appreciate your work with the Explorers. Uh, they're a great group of kids, and, and they're, well, young people, I should say, instead of kids. And uh, we look forward to you working with us as a sergeant. And I, look, I expect great things, and I know you'll, you'll be do great, do a great job. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations, Sergeant. Thank you for the work that you've done to uh, to direct the youth. It's that's one of the most important jobs that you can do. So thank you, and congratulations. And and final comment on my behalf, uh, uh, Sergeant. Uh, congratulations on on your promotion. Uh, Sergeant is a very difficult p position to fill, um, and so I think we're in good hands with you. But I always appreciate uh, your jovial attitude out in the community, and I've always enjoyed. Uh, you know, working with you, and I know you're going to do a great job. So congratulations on your promotion, and I wish you um, the very best. I know you're going to do great, though. So thank you. Yeah. Additionally, tonight I get the pleasure to introduce to you Diana Diaz. Uh, as you may recall, a couple weeks ago I stood in front of you and introduced Juan Morales. Uh, as part of that process, uh, I explained that we hired Mr. Morales out of a, a level two academy. Well, this was his partner. <laughs> so she, she got the pleasure of going up to Eureka and finishing the academy with uh, Officer Morales. Uh, Diana is a native, a Brawley native, born and raised right here in, in Brawley. Uh, in the audience tonight, we have her mother, Maria, and brother, Walter, back here uh, joining us. <laughs> so uh, in 2014, Diana graduated from Brawley Union High School. Um, and then in February of 2016, she, yes, very young. So <laughs> good. If, if you're doing the math, she is the youngest officer. <laughs> yeah, that's She's the youngest officer. So uh, shortly after her 21st birthday, we hired her and sent her off to, that, uh, to finish that academy in Eureka. Uh, in 2016, in February 2016, she actually enrolled and put herself through the level three and two here locally at IVC. Um, she completed that, as I said, in December of 2016. And in March, we hired her just after her 21st birthday. Uh, she completed the Level 1 Academy in, two, in December of 2017. Uh, I had the pleasure of going up and, and attending that graduation and had the pleasure of, of pinning her with her badge. So that was a, a great uh, occasion for me as well. Uh, it was one of my first as a, uh, as a police chief. So um, earlier this uh, month, uh, Diana completed our extensive FTO program and was assigned to the patrol division as a solo patrol officer where she will be responding to calls for service uh, in our most uh, recognizable position as a patrol officer. So with that, uh, I introduce to you Officer Diana Diaz. All right. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I, all, I want to thank everyone for giving me this opportunity. My family, if it wasn't for my family, I, I don't think I'd be in this position. The city of Raleigh for giving me this this opportunity that not many people at my age get to say that, you know, you, I became a police officer. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm getting over a little cough. <laughs> uh, this is how I, I, I've told Chief before. My goal as a police officer has always been to be a police officer for the city of Raleigh. I was born and raised here, and I'm more than excited to be able to stay here and make a difference in my community. Well, we welcome you here. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, uh, if, if I could, Officer Diaz, I, I've, I've had an opportunity to see, see you operate um, in, in the field, and I know going through all that, once again, that you had to go through locally to get yourself in this position um, really speaks volumes of your family. So mom, brother, family, um, 
very appreciative. Not only are you from the community and from within, but uh, um, that uh, you come from obviously a, a, another great Brawley family, and you're a product of that. And I know you'll make them proud. Um, we're very fortunate to have you, so we wish you well. You have absolute support of this council, as you know, um, support of our staff, support of this community. And uh, Chief, once again, I know you're carrying on the great work of our, um, of, of our previous chief, but if you can keep finding great folks like this um, from within, please keep that up. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Gatcher, any oh. comments? Yes, uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting you before. Officer, Officer Diaz was at several events that I've been at, especially one at the pool, I think, uh, with the youth uh, at the Lions Center for the pool. And it's been a pleasure dealing with you and working and talking with you. And so I know you're going to do fine. It's, we're always proud to have somebody from Brawley become a police officer here in Brawley. And we think that's important, local community and everything. And it's important for the youth of our community to see someone be successful and become a police officer here because I think there's a lot of kids in the youth, in the explorers, uh, that look forward to that. And I, I'm glad that you've achieved that success and congratulations. Thank you. Well, I too want to congratulate you. Um, it's really great to see somebody from our local schools uh, want to work when, in one of our finest cities here in Imperial County, and I'm glad you chose the city of Raleigh. And I wish you very much success and hopefully a long, <coughs> long career with the city of Raleigh. Since you're so young, I hope to, that you continue and, and growing and promoting within the department and um, just wish you the very best. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. I, I expect to see great things from you. It's, it's always inspiring to see someone so young be so motivated um, to and, and take the initiative to improve herself, and, and it's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, and one final comment here from Council. Uh, Officer Diaz, congratulations, not just to you, but your family, not just in attendance, but those at home. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very uh, happy for you and your achievement and in reaching your goal early in life. And so I know uh, you'll have a long career in law enforcement. And so uh, I'm, I'm very proud of you, and I'm glad to see that uh, we have Brawley officers coming through the ranks and moving and hopefully advancing in the years to come, right? So uh, your career is just starting out, and I wish you all the best and safety and success. So Thank congratulations you. to you. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks, Thank you for the introductions. So we'll move on to the agenda. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Items are. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we may. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't we get uh, some pictures with the family up here, and that'd be great. We want a picture with the sergeant. Too. Sure, sergeant. Where are you going? Sergeant, you got to go. Where are you going? Uh, come on, where are you going? Come on. You got a call or something? I never heard the radio go off. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Come on. Uh, we got to take some pictures. Yeah, let's get a picture. I guess that's a group photo. And we can get a group, group photo. Sanchez, you almost tried to leave, you know, before we got a picture with you. I don't know what's going on there. Then he wanted to hide in the back. I know he wanted to hide back then. He said he got a call. He said he got a All right. Thank you all very much. So the next item on the agenda is the uh, consent agenda. Items are approved by one motion. Council members or members of the public may request consent. Items be considered separately at a time determined by the mayor. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as written? So moved. I'll second. There's a motion to approve. There's a second. Any discussion by council? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. My vote was aye. Next item on the agenda is regular business for a discussion and potential action. And that item has been uh, withdrawn. withdrawn. Okay. So we'll move on to 4B. 
Discussion and potential action to approve resolution number 2017, resolution of the City Council of the City of Brawley, California, supporting the Brawley Adams Family Housing Project, approving and authoring a request from Chelsea Investment Corporation, Inc. to levy fully justified assessment fees and execute a fee deferral agreement for the construction of a 72-unit income-restricted family apartment complex loaded, located on the south side of C Street between Eastern Avenue and Best Avenue. The backup uh, materials on page 24. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have the uh, city manager uh, lead the discussion. Thank you. So uh, good evening, Mayor Nava and members of the council and community. Uh, this evening we have an item uh, included in the agenda for your consideration. The staff report was prepared by our uh, planning director, Gordon Gaist. He will be the lead presenter here this evening. We also have two uh, project proponents that are here. <coughs> and can, uh, at least Mr. Cummings is a familiar face. Uh, Bob Cummings is here today as project manager and Kershat is here as the director of finance. Uh, we have been working with Chelsea Investment for a number of years in the city of Brawley. We've got some um, working experience at a number of sites that they have developed in our city limits. And what is uh, proposed tonight is consideration of a new phase of a project that they aim to undertake on C Street. Uh, this project was before the City Council and the Planning Commission previously as part of a zone change uh, that occurred earlier this year. It was one of the first actions of the Council. Uh, and at this time, uh, the, the uh, action that's before you is to consider the City's uh, involvement in the project in a more formal way. And included in the backup is a resolution that describes how the city uh, might support the project on a going forward basis. I will invite up Gordon Gaist for a moment to provide you with an overview of the project description, including some of the primary features of the project. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council Members, Gordon Gaist, Planning Director. Um, <clears throat> as Rosanna mentioned uh, earlier this year, this product, project was entitled um, uh, Rezoned to an R3. Uh, it, it has several phases involved in it. These usually take a while to build out. They, the, the grants usually come, or the funding usually comes uh, in pieces of, you know, anywhere from 50 to 80 units. Um, the way we, we entitle it, it's, it's allowed up to 80 units each one. This particular round is 72 is the magic number that the state is looking for. Um, this will give uh, some funding for the developer. It will also give uh, this particular uh, uh, Growth Council grant will also includes a transportation component, which is, is a little new to us. We've, we, before, we've had like a lot of tax credit ones. This one actually includes some money that can be used by the city to do improvements based on certain criteria that the Growth Council, uh, you know, allocates their money for. And, you know, nowadays the big thing is, is green uh, things like, uh, you know, bicycling and, mm -hmm. and pedestrian improvements. And in that area, there's a lot of places we could use the improvements for, especially for for sidewalks. That would be the, you know, probably the, the bulk of the money that would go to uh, those improvements would be co connectivity. Because now you're going to have another, you know, a new apartment complex. You're going to have kids there. They got to, you know, going to walk over to Oakley School. There's some gaps there. There's a crosswalks that you put in. Uh, so maybe of the the uh, uh, flashing ones and things like that. There's th all those things are related and can be paid for with with this type of grant money. Um, as also as part of this project, and, and we've done this once before with uh, the uh, AMG project on, on Malin Street, mm -hmm. where uh, they, they will pay the full impact fees eventually as part, as part of an agreement. Uh, they will pay the current ones now, and they'll be paying the difference uh, over the loan term of, mm -hmm. the, of the project. Thank you. Um, Is there additional just, comments? Yeah. No, just one more thing. Yeah, you know, and as part of, uh, you know, their point system, what they also get, uh, you know, extra points for is on-site things that are also uh, green in nature. And one thing they plan on doing is having you know, a, a net zero photoelectric solar to, to power their uh, uh, project on-site, which is a, you know, good thing to have. Lowers our, lowers the, you know, greenhouse gases per the the state's mandates, mandates. That, we, that each city has to do. Right. And uh, like I said, the, uh, as Rosanna mentioned, uh, Kershaw and uh, Bob are here to answer any questions and give you a presentation if you so desire. 
Thank you, Mr. Gase. I'll open it up for a council discussion and questions. Are there any questions uh, from the city council or comments from the city council members? Um, well, Anyone I guess the only question I have, does this negatively affect the city in any way in terms of the grant? I get, the first question I have is, I know we had some discussions about the January meeting. Yes. Did we change the date on the January meeting? Refresh my memory. Um, at the last city council meeting, the council uh, moved to, to make the meeting date January 3rd, so one day later. Okay, Wednesday, so. January 3rd at 6 p.m. is your next okay. meeting date. All yep. right. All right. Okay. Uh, I guess my question is, can you see any negative to the city in regards to this, this action? Are there any negatives to this? If city? we were to approve it. If we were to approve it. Uh, I think there have been a number of questions that have been raised with reference to the impacts of a higher density set of dwelling units on the city system. The development impact fee study uh, development, when it's, when it's uh, drafted and prepared and comes to the council for consideration, it makes distinctions be between the types of uses that are lower and higher intensity use. And so the offset that, that you gain in a project like this is that a multifamily has a different uh, assessment than a single family. So some of those, those questions that have arisen are, well, don't a uh, more intensive set of uses create greater demands on the system? And certainly, they do create demands. As population grows, there are greater demands on the system. Uh, the development impact fee process is intended to be a method for offsetting uh, the the uh, effects on city services from what today it is versus when you introduce a new project, what is it going to introduce as new demands into the system, and how is that applicant going to be responsible for it? So uh, what I think sometimes catches people by surprise is that an, an applicant or developer might ask to be assessed a higher rate. Um, the, the city undertook a study in 2011 that addressed development impact fees as well as water and sewer capacity fees. Uh, those studies are valid for five years. Uh, at, at the time that the study was approved and adopted by the council, there was concern about the, the fee increases affecting whether or not development could um, be achieved from a financial point of view in the city limits. So at that time, the council directed that no, uh, that, that increases would be phased in over time. So development impact fees were phased in over three years. Uh, water and sewer capacity fees were phased in over five years. Uh, subsequent to that first year's direction to council of uh, phasing, the, the council then provided subsequent direction in a public meeting that no fees shall increase unless uh, approved, approved as an right. action taken by the city council. There have been some years that the council has opted to move forward with development impact fee uh, scheduled phase increases and some uh, that the council has said uh, the market hasn't uh, recovered enough and we're concerned that the fee structure would deter further development. So where we ultimately landed after five years of the study was um, only making it through uh, the first phase of development impact fee increases and the second phase of water and sewer capacity fee increases. So what the applicant is proposing as a part of this project is we've got a, a nexus study that was prepared and was a sound approach. They're saying charge us the higher level difference. At the time of development, we'll pay what everybody else who uh, constructs a multifamily apartment complex uh, uh, would pay. Take the difference between that and the fully burdened rate and uh, enter into an agreement with us. Uh, to pay that difference to the city of Brawley over uh, the same period as the covenants associated with the income restricted uh, elements of the, of the project, which is 55 Five years. years. So uh, that difference uh, is, is estimated to be paid out at some time between now and a 55 year time horizon. So the impact fee deferral is for the elevated <coughs> fees. Uh, now, from the point of view of, is this a negative for the city of Brawley? If the city didn't uh, move forward to assess the higher rates, the developer would still have the option to pull building permits uh, tomorrow and just pay the lower amount. Uh, the reason that they are requesting the higher amount is so they can join with the city to strengthen their application um, and also accomplish a set of improvements that is of value to the city, which is sidewalk improvements. Um, concrete work is really costly. Uh, we know from our experience uh, with local developers that ADA ramps in particular are very costly. 
uh, this area of the city uh, that accesses both Oakley School and the recently improved Ellis Giroux Park uh, has some, some further needs with reference to connectivity. Uh, it is in the council's hand to determine whether you wish for the city to play an active role in reaching our regional housing needs assessment goals. In our housing element, we have an obligation to serve all types of uh, residents in the city of Brawley, whether they're moderate income, high income, low or very low income. Uh, this project proposes to define what types of inc income groups are eligible. Uh, I do have uh, Chief uh, Brown prepared to speak to any questions that may arise with <coughs> reference to the demands mm -hmm. of multifamily units and how they may be the same, different, or less than other types of development in our city limits. Mm -hmm. um, as a general rule of thumb, we have found that new construction often comes with new management, which often comes with tighter controls on who is screened and permitted to live in uh, current and modern day housing conditions. So uh, if you have any further questions for either staff or uh, PD, I know we have both PD and fire stats that we're prepared to provide to you today. Unfortunately, Chief Peraza was just back uh, a little earlier today yeah, after his it. return from Santa Barbara County and was exhausted. So uh, Chief Brown agreed to, to pull both numbers and have those available for the staff, right. uh, for the council's uh, review. I think we probably should have him come forward. Mm -hmm. Do we jeopardize the 1.2 million 1.1 million two hundred fifty thousand dollars. If we don't approve this, is that a potential that they that even if the developer went forward with the apartment complex, does that mean that we would not receive the one point two million, or, or that they would not be able to provide yeah, so the one point two million one point two five million that, to yeah. uh, us? That is a potential risk because without the city showing a partnership. The likelihood, likelihood of them being successful in securing the grant award is lessened. It's all based on a scoring matrix, um, and uh, Kershad, I'm sure, can speak to what some of those uh, benefits are, literally from a point <coughs> system point of view, because you can tell from the outset how to design your project and how to achieve the highest score possible uh, if you partner. Now, uh, there have, I want to share with Council that there have been contacts made by the Strategic Growth Council to ask us, are you, are you really talking to Chelsea? Is there a real dialogue going on about what pedestrian access is needed? Um, what, what neighborhood concerns are? I explained to them the experience uh, through the public hearing process tied to the zone change that uh, we had residents and property owners here talking about how concerned they were with a vacant parcel and the attractive nuisance that it creates and that they look forward to having occupancy and construction in that area. We also had neighboring property owners that were a part of a self-help uh, Coachella Valley Housing Coalition subdivision that was constructed. They were uh, present and expressed on the record concerns with the height of the property relative to their backyard fences. Uh, what I found striking was that Chelsea was willing to take into consideration all of the current concerns that came forward from a lighting point of view, from an elevation point of view, there's a great deal of flexibility and willingness to fit within the neighboring community. And, and unfortunately, that's sometimes a rare, sure. a rare point of view. Okay. Council Member Couchman, any further questions or comments? <clears throat> I guess just to hear from the police department whether the, there's a current apartment complex in that area. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to hear from him, I think, what your experiences have been with that apartment complex and what you anticipate maybe your experience being with this one. But um, before we do that, if we, we could ask the rest else. of council, yeah. I can ask the rest of council, are any additional questions or comments before moving on to uh, Chief Brown? I mean, for me, just reading, um, again, what's been presented in our, in our packet and obviously asking um, some questions that were just now answered, uh, to me, again, uh, I think it's real important and that the public understands, as I would understand it, that we're working with um, an organization that we have track record and history with. I think quality, delivery, um, and, and ultimately saying what you do, doing what you say is important. So um, if there's questions surrounding that, that would be more of where I would be after. But my understanding is at least by staff recommendation that that's been largely answered. Also, this is more question slash statement with the chief up here. Um, the location itself is already, I know we went through rezoning, but again, there are existing multi-family high-density dwellings, correct? I mean, would you, just from a PD or public safety perspective, this, this particular location would, would be consistent 
um, with the, kind of the surrounding neighborhood and environment? Yes, that's in your right. opinion. Okay, um, I, I think, like I said, question statement. But uh, I, I mm -hmm. thought that was that was important. But I'd, I'd be interested in hearing what the stats are from the chief, and as well as I'd like to hear from the applicant. Sure, Council Member Hardigy. Yes, I had a couple of, of uh, questions. Um, in the uh, in the letter that was sent uh, or prepared by Gordon, um, it indicates that the developer would pay the city over an extended period of time when the project is operationally profitable. Mm -hmm. So I did have a concern about that because I'm not. Sh I mean, that's that's kind of a uh, we have no idea when that would be. So mm -hmm. what <coughs> what kind of um, response or what kind of information can we get on that? If we can get the applicant maybe to to answer that. Sure. If you could please come up, please. state your name, please. Hello, this is Kushat Mr. Lyokla. I'm the director of project finance. Actually, um, you know, operationally profitable. Maybe what was referred to was that when the project starts construction, there's a time frame you to construct, develop the project and then we call it placed in service. Mm -hmm. So upon placed in service, which means it, the operations are stabilized, generating income, there is always cash flow left over in the project. So we will get into a typical 55-year residual receipt loan agreement with the city that would allow us, the project, prioritize the cash flow in a way that would uh, hopefully assure the full payment of the uh, loan amount together with the interest. You know, we are applying uh, uh, for funding from a program called Affordable Housing Sustainable Communities, mm -hmm. AHSC program, which is an HCD program that is governed by Strategic Growth Council, mm -hmm. SGC. So typically <coughs> the way the deal structure works is that you know, the city would be getting into some sort of priority agreement discussions with HCD as they would be providing not only affordable housing development loan proceeds to the project, but also sustainable transportation infrastructure, in this case, which we define as bike lanes and sidewalk as a grant, which will benefit the city directly. So. So in light of the potential discussion with HCD state itself, we believe that uh, there would be a case that we can even make starting year one, potential starting the cash flow payment. Typically these are structured as based upon available cash flow due to some of the unexpected events <coughs> or circumstances. But uh, so year one there is available cash flow. All the way up to 50. I mean, I'm not sure how the rest of the council feels, but I think I would like to have something more concrete than something that just says when the project is operationally profitable. I mean, something that states a particular date or year or... Well, would, I, I, I don't did, know if that's possible That's a great not. point, uh, Councilman. Could I, could I ask a question, though, sure. for my own, I, maybe for all, but we're still talking about the deferred amount, right? Right, right. right. So right. until we amount. have a new study, a, a new Nexus study, right. and, and produce, right. we, we can't even do that. So until that... No, 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 right. no. They're Is agreeing that, to accept the old, and the old, old and not challenge. I understand that. And but, not challenge. Um, but there is a different... When, when a new... If there is a higher rate established, that would... They wouldn't... Uh, no, because they're due at the time of building permit. Right. Okay. But so, if the building okay. permit on additional units is at a later date... Let's say it was 55 years later. Right. <laughs> right? Right. Okay. Then it, the new uh, rates would apply right. at the time that those yeah. sure. rates so were So these imposed. rates okay. would apply, the ones that we're, the ones we're, we're that are dealing on the with right now. now. Well, if they were <laughs> successful at securing the financing, yeah. they would pull building permits as, ready, as, as soon as they're ready to construct. Mm -hmm. So that at the time of building permit is when you pay what's currently on the books. They're mm -hmm. saying, we'll pay what's currently on the books, but we'd like you to assess the higher <coughs> amount as well. Yes, and that's what I they're had, telling Right, and once that's is that the, the higher amount that we already have. That we already have. Okay. And just for the 72 units. Correct. Okay. It's just for what's being proposed to be constructed. Right now. Uh -huh. right. Okay. And then I had another, another question, if I may. Um, <coughs> of course. Um, if, okay, this, because this <coughs> talks about, uh, okay, this, this, it's a big project, long-term project. Um, just a question that came to my mind is, uh, what if, um, they were to, you were to decide to sell the property. 
uh, before the 55 year period, what happens to, does that carry over into uh, right. whoever so negotiates the new loan or? Very good question. Um, this is a low income housing tax credit project, mm -hmm. which means that it will be owned by a limited partnership. And there is a tax credit period that the, that the partnership receives the tax credit. These are federal tax credits over the course of 10 years. And the limited partner who is the tax credit investor in the deal has to stay in the project for 15 years. However, the, the, the AMI or the rent restrictions and the restrictions that the city or the, or the tax credit agency at the state level, including HCD itself, mm -hmm. the restrictions are minimum for 55 years. And, and once the agreement is entered into in terms of any loan products, any debt, that, that cannot disappear. Even though every 15 years there is a possibility that there could be re-syndication, we call it, if the project needs substantial rehabilitation, then, then you recapitalize or refinance the project with the similar financing plan. However, whatever the lien position that the city's loan would have to begin with, would be honored. Would be honored forward. at the time, right? Right. So, so. it won't disappear. Okay. And uh, other, the, the interesting thing is, these these projects are heavily regulated by so many agencies, including Revenue Service, mm -hmm. and that even for the for the subsidy, we call it financial assistance, to be considered a loan. You know, they, they will they will watch for that 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 the lien positions are honored, and so forth. Otherwise there are potential risks of being treated as grant and we don't want that because the limited partnership, <coughs> even though the managing general partner is a non-profit organization, oh. as a whole, partnership is a tax-paying entity. So any grant uh, coming to the partnership would, uh, would you know, affect the structure it's negatively. So I'm just giving examples of several angles that basically we would honor that loan once entered into will exist until it's fully paid. Very well. Any additional questions, Council Member? No, Hamby? I'm fine. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Council Member Hamby, any questions from you? Um, I've got a, a couple. One one question is uh, other other Chelsea developments in city limits. Uh, what what are we where are we at on those? How many do we have? So we have two other Chelsea investment properties. One is the uh, Elk Senior Apartments project on Willard, uh, Willard and Pano, Pano, yeah. Pano right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other is uh, very close to this project area. It's on C Street, mm -hmm. and uh, well, a little bit beyond C at best. Uh -huh. uh, the the property that long, run, runs um, along best to the north of Circle K. And are those similarly structured as far as the uh, a loan situation? Uh, I was not involved in those projects. With reference to the Chelsea investment property at Elks, the city did have a similar arrangement. And on an annual basis, we go through a reporting process where it's determined whether or not residual receipts are available. And as part of the city's approved audits, you uh, receive an accounting on an annual basis of where we stand with those commitments. And has that generally had a a profit at the end of the year? Um, not uh, not to the effect that it results in a payment out to the city, because for the Elks, I'm going to try to recall, I believe we're in something like the seventh lien position, if I recall off the top of my head. So, uh, But it's not. Uh, normally, when, when we anticipate the ability to pay on the 55-year time frame, which is the usual covenants associated with an income-restricted property, uh, you're, you're usually past the midpoint before you start receiving payments. So we're not past the midpoint yet on, on either of those two sure. projects. They're both relatively young yeah. projects. Mm -hmm. and, and so the other on, on BEST is in the same situation where it has a... Uh, no, we were not, uh, not to my recollection, were we involved in, um, in any type of uh, financial arrangement involving the project. Okay. Uh, at that time, I don't believe the Strategic Growth <coughs> Council existed. Yeah, this is know, a different funding Different approach. funding sources available sometimes for different reasons. And I wanted to add a couple points. 
you know, Brawley Alex is a senior project, smaller units. So this project is a large family project, uh, 72 units. So basically, uh, it's ones, twos, and threes. And also, just I want to take the opportunity to just give you a big picture highlights what we believe how this helps the the city in the big picture economically and and strategically before state of California's you know eyes in terms of where the trend is going and so forth. So we have secured already 13 project-based vouchers from IVHA for developmentally disabled population that that would that we we plan to host at this uh, project. And typically, the project-based vouchers pay fair market rents, even though they target very really low AMI population in terms of income qualification. However, the rents are set uh, per HUD instructions every year at fair market rent. Mm -hmm. And then when you underwrite a financial model, you know, typically the underwriting is very conservative. For example, just to give you an example, 5% vacancy rate, typically these are 100% occupied, and then you don't increase the rents more than 2.5% every year, but if you look at historically from 2016 to 2017, hot published rents went up like 5-6%, and this doesn't even include the fair market rents. You know, it, it, what we're trying to accomplish here, I guess if I may, to, to simply, you know, we don't <coughs> necessarily need to determine the exact amount for a promissory note or the deferred impact fee component. I guess the ask is that, you know, we are the sponsor, the applicant, the sole applicant for the AHSC application, and we will not only ask for a subsidy for the affordable housing development, but also bring literally $1.25 million to mm -hmm. the city that, that requires that we hire local workforce, okay? That also requires that to the extent it's grant that you pay them the highest possible prevailing wages for the STI component and, and you know, develop the sidewalks and bring some bike lane and then create some, uh, we call it net zero, which means that the, we are trying to size a solar project on site that would cover the full load of the project, including the tenants. So that, that is a benef benefit to the tenants as well as the, uh, as well as the Project and then the main reason we, we are interested in this increased deferred impact fee is that AHSC program is relatively competitive, and and we think we know how to make these projects competitive as an applicant, and and any leverage, even though it is deferred, and is shown by the local support local agency, not only counts in mechanical point calculation but also shows that there's a local support by the local jurisdiction for the project that combines the you know very low and low income families AMIs ranging ranging from 30 percent to 60 percent but also bring in you know energy related or transportation improvement components that that will have an impact on the greenhouse gas emission reductions and, and the, the, this AHSC program is approved by the governor for 10 more years. We believe this is the future. We do have, we did have several discussions with the Strategic Growth Council ourselves, and there is some momentum by them to deploy some dollars in the county, which has not been done before. And this project will compete in the rural category which, which doesn't, which means won't compete with TOD project, transit-oriented development projects in big cities like LA or other towns. So we, we, we think that with the help of cities' support and, and just, just allowing us to be able to enter into an agreement if we are successful in securing this funding. Final thing is that the timeline, you know, these projects are, uh, these applications are very comprehensive. It involves several components, not on the financial section and also the documentation of it. that are lead time items. And given the fact that um, the deadline is 
January 16, you know, if it was, you know, up to our recommendation, we would respectfully ask that, you know, we get this support sooner rather than later because I think if we do not have such support, the project won't be that competitive and it might really affect our decision of whether we even want to do an AHSC application. Just, just wanted to uh, state that. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, and thank you for the our, our points of clarification. Oh, right. Any other comments or questions from the City Council on this item? I, I just had, I think it's in here somewhere, but I don't see it. Uh, the initial uh, fees, yeah. impact fees yeah. that are yes. going to be paid. Yes. Oh. Sure. So uh, the estimated fees are uh, at the time of building permit being pulled, mm -hmm. $600,277. So that they would pay it the same as anybody else who was uh, pulling building permits for that number of units. And the deferred amount that would um, ultimately make its way into the proposed impact fee loan is $741,875. So combined, they represent $1,342,152 uh, in development impact fees and water and sewer capacity fees. Okay. Thank you. So it's over $600,000 that would be collected up front mm -hmm. prior to construction. In addition to $1.25 million dollar and improvements. To the table. Yeah. Sure. Let, let me understand. Okay. Please. If I may. Let me understand what we're doing here. What we're doing right here is we're approving a resolution to support their housing project. Uh, that's the assessment of the elevated development impact fees, the water, wastewater capacity fees, and authorization. And we're authorizing the city staff to prepare an impact fee deferral agreement. Are, are we, as a council, going to approve that deferral agreement? Uh, we would be happy to bring it back to the council so that you can see the full language of the sure. impact fee that agreement. We were simply not able to accomplish right. final language uh, in time for tonight's meeting. I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with approving the resolution today, giving them the resolution so they can apply for the grant funding. We'll look at the impact fee deferral agreement based upon what some of the questions that you've had here and how you develop that agreement. We should be able to reach an agreement both on your question where you're questioning like the, the priority and maybe put some years in there or however time, we do that and then go from there because I think right now what we're doing is we're holding up a grant application. They haven't even received the grant yet. We're not even talking about the agreement. All we're talking about is support from, from the council for them to possibly do this type of agreement and possibly receive this grant money. And it actually seems like it does benefit us. Primarily we get the 600000 up front. But which, we, which we would get anyway if they're going to do a, a project anyway. We also have a potential for getting the $1.2 million for some infrastructure improvement on that area of town where clearly there's a need for infrastructure improvement. And then ultimately we might receive, and we might, and I won't say we will, but by agreement we might receive the other $741,000, which is an increased level, which would provide money as we move along through this process. But so, so council member Couchman, so you're saying uh, we could uh, approve it in concept? Well, the right. resolution, right. Uh -huh. we're not approving any kind of agreement. We could ask right. that the agreement right. be brought back to us Very good for, point. For, right. for a discussion, and then we can go from there in terms of what we <coughs> want to do after that point in time. Because if, if we wanted to say, no, we're going to reject the agreement, it might have an impact on, on their grant. They may not receive the grant, but at least we could do it at that time. I think they need it quicker. If we're talking about right now, they would have 28 days to submit this as of January 16th if we approve it today. If we wait till, Jan if we wait till Jan January 3rd, they're only going to have 13 days. And, and I've done grants before, and I know what that time frame can mean. And so uh, I, I just think that since it's just simply the resolution in support of it, I don't think we've reached, we're not reaching a finalized agreement at this point in time. Valid point. Any additional comments from the city council before we hear from our chief? I, I believe our chief uh, had some comments with respect to uh, some of the concerns at uh, some of these housing projects. Correct. You wanted to thank you up? very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so today I had the opportunity to pull the statistical information uh, for 235 North Best Road, which is that uh, the, the sister facility that uh, uh, was built a few years ago. Uh, that sits on the corner of Eastern and C Street that uh, the city manager had mentioned uh, previously. So looking at the numbers, um, there are 76 units at that uh, complex. And 
if you were to take what the calls for service were, which uh, and and then minimize what the officers initiate, um, we're looking at a total of uh, 48 calls for service over the last 12 months. So the quick math on that is four calls uh, a month on average, which um, you think um, the the initial look at that doesn't appear to be that much. But when you <coughs> compare that to uh, 120 West Malin, uh, which is not um, a, a complex that has restrictions on income um, and rents to normal people, uh, it has 108 units and only 29 calls for service during the same time period. So it almost cuts the, the call service in half. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to note, though, a, a particular um, issue with that is that it is a gated community um, and the gate is functional and, and operating at all times so it does restrict access significantly so obviously that would deter crime which would reduce our response to, to calls for service so um, when we look at, and that's uh, on the, the police side the interestingly on the uh, fire medical side during that same time period, we only had one call for service for our fire department, and that was a medical aid. At that apartment At complex. the 235 at, North at, at the 235 In, in 12 West. months? Just in one 12 call? months. Yeah, I think you have more than that on my Malin Street. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I mean. so. So that, that kind of gives it a, a perspective of calls for service. So um, four, four calls on average per month over the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that okay. information, Chief. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? No, no other questions. I don't. No additional questions. Uh, the comment that you shared, um, <coughs> City Manager. So uh, one thing, just based on the feedback that was shared as comments from Council, on page 30 at the top, there is a whereas in the resolution that re references whereas the fee deferral shall be paid from 20% of residual cash flow from the project at the applicable federal rate with a term of 55 years. Um, maybe there's a way to rework that whereas where it um, ensures that the council has the opportunity to sure. review the final terms. I'm going to look to Reviewed Krishad. and approved by council? Uh -huh. Sure. Okay. Sure. Would you like to step up for a moment if you have any other features that are a must include for the purposes of the grant application? Um, I, I think with the change that, that should be sufficient enough, uh, I'm assuming that the other points are clear. Council member, you made a good point in terms of clarifying it. You know, we, we need the support to be able to do a competitive application. Everything is subject to final agreement and you know. Right. We don't even know that you're going to receive the money right. at this right. point right. in time. And but if you do, right. I think there's some clarifying that can be done at that right. point. And then with this resolution, we could make certain assumptions in the application that there is a component that, that there is a support by the city, which is always subject to change sure. before we get into standard agreement. And it, if, I, if I might state, um, the, the, the AH, AHSC is going to do some monitoring of this, I'm sure, since there are federal organization or wherever this is coming from the state the state actually the state of California they're going to do some monitoring of this situation and I'm assuming that they're going to hold you to whatever agreement that you make within within your grant money agreement they're they're going to look at that in the long term and make sure that everything right. flows along yeah. as it should and Absolutely. so I think that there are several different monitors that are going to take place in able to regulate it in that sense. right so I could have the city council turn to page 30, please, uh, so we can all reference what our city manager was referring to at the very top, where it says, whereas the deferral fee shall be paid from 20% of the re residual cash flow from the project at the applicable federal rate with a term of 55 years. So uh, the so, proposed uh, the yeah. change language would be uh, the uh, proposed, whereas the impact fee deferral agreement shall be reviewed and approved by the city council. Whereas the proposed... Whereas the impact fee deferral agreement uh -huh. shall be reviewed and approved by the city council. Okay. That gives us an opportunity, as council member Couchman has described, to, to come back for final approval. Um, and it would allow the, the 
application to move forward if it were approved. Um, Krishat, do we need to reference the 55-year time horizon for the purposes of the covenant? I linkage? would, uh, you know, so I we, we want to be... like to do that. Uh, so we, we want the fact that, you know, this is a, such a resolution that there's no question we will get into an agreement in, in terms of deferred impact fees for the increased portion, but the terms and what the amount would be subject to final. Okay. Right, maybe you know, subject so that to. It doesn't terms, look like the terms and conditions of which shall be reviewed approval. and right. approved right. by the city council. Right. right. The terms That's and conditions right. of which. But it's certain that we're getting into it so that the they don't think that this, whether it's a commitment or not a commitment. You know. it, I guess, is, is the 55 years a term that they establish? Or is it that well, something that you're establishing? Five years. We think that we will, we will at least have this project income restricted for. So typically, it could be longer. It doesn't need to be 55 per okay. se. Okay. So you know. But income restricted, it would be right. there's a, that limitation, yeah. right? Right. So, uh, so, so I don't think we have to necessarily reference yeah. the 55 years, but I do think we need to reference well, that it's. By it's a agreement. residual receipt loan. Residual. Yes. Is there any proposed language that that uh, council That's would right. like to include in the? Uh, so, Mr. Mr. Mayor, if we're at arriving at high agreement, the amendment we would make to the existing resolution before we uh, consider maybe a motion would be um, uh, take the whereas on the top of page thirty, um, as presented, the fee deferral shall be paid um, from twenty percent at residual cash flow. Unless we want to take that out, that, I guess that could be negotiable. Um, and the project and the applicable, uh, applicable federal rate with a term of 55 years will be um, subject so to the terms and conditions uh, or subject to review and approval of the um, Brawley City Council, yeah. um, which simply says that, that that particular item needs to come back before the council um, for final review and approval of whatever those terms and conditions sure. are. So, sure. I mean, it's subject to review and approval yeah. by the city that's council. All. I know, uh, Council Member Hamby, uh, you had some questions with respect to uh, possibly deferring the item. Or do you still have the same concerns um, after the discussion today? Well, I think if um, if those if if some of these terms are going to be reviewed, or at least this particular issue is going to be reviewed, I guess uh, I guess there's no reason why it can't be voted on tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do have a couple questions regarding the um, the breakdown of the impact fees versus permit fees. How much of that six hundred thousand up front is is impact fees, and how much is permit fees, or is that all combined in this in this type of a development? Uh, no, we didn't actually include the what the building permit review fees were. Right. So those are on top of what's here. This is just based on the development impact fee nexus st mm -hmm. study and the water and sewer capacity fee study, the fees associated with those elements. So the, the actual amount that will ultimately be received by the city and by the school districts relative to this will be in excess of the 600,000 referenced. Because we don't have building plans yet, it's hard for us to fully define mm -hmm what those we can count units and right. therefore come up with the basis and come up with some assumptions about the size of the connection and different things uh, to service the property from a water and sewer point of view but from a building inspection fee we're not at a point that we can we can estimate them if you'd like us to come up with fees the next time it comes back maybe Chelsea will be in a position to sure, provide us with some additional fees would be in addition to this right. so mm -hmm. to answer your question Question, Council Member, is is the city manager stated these are development impact fees? And, so. and I, I do have a question uh, slash comment. Uh, there was a member of the public that contacted me regarding this agenda item, and they had concern uh, with respect to the number of units. Uh, Seventy two is referenced on our backup material, but I believe a comment was shared with an outside agency. I believe it was the IID that you were working with 80 units. Is there any clarification on that so, that you could so provide? So what we, we, we did meet, uh, I think a gentleman's name was Miguel. IID actually showed uh, pretty positive feedback about our project. So initially, you know, uh, th uh, what we decided to do was when we were doing the zone change and mapping, uh, recording the map process for this project that, you know, we wanted to go all the way up to 80 so have the ability to build 80, which was driven by 
20 per acres. Mm -hmm. So the status of the project change in terms of in which category it competes for AHSC application. If it is a TOD project, transit you need to transit-oriented development. Tran I'm sorry, <laughs> transit-oriented <laughs> development project. It would be minimum required density would be 30 per acres. If it is, uh, uh, they call it integrated connectivity project ICP or RIPA rural integrated project rural. So if it is an integrated project not rural, it is required to have 20 per acre. We thought that this would have been an integrated connectivity project, but due to the uh, description and definition changes as to qualifying the project as rural, it qualified under the rural component and which only requires a minimum 15 per acre. Okay. So we, 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 we needed to have minimum 60 units roughly and that if you look at the HSC application point categories, the higher the number of units, the better in terms of GHG greenhouse gas emission reduction and in terms of strategic growth council, you know, promotion that, you know, more units per buck. Okay. So, so is it 72 or is it 80? <laughs> 72. Just, okay. Okay. All right. 72. Perfect. Okay. Easy 72. enough. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, right. Just for simplicity's sake. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And the 240, uh -huh. how far in the future? Another question with respect okay. so to the potential yeah. of building out the, right. the additional. So up to 240. Typically, it, it, the, uh, the financing cycle, since it, these are zoned and entitled, take about uh, one and a half to two years. So I would say in the next six to eight years, you know, uh, we would see, like, you know, on a conservative basis, uh, should nothing else change in terms of material component of the tax credit program, you know, it would take probably six to eight years to see full four phases to be completed. Okay. And the IID is saying that they have capacity? So, it, it, you know, it's, yes. So, it, so we have letters uh, being signed for this component first, and then also we were considering the whole four phases. But is it relates to this project? Yes. To the 72. Right. Is the net zero component, is that, um, those are connected to the grid, though? It is connected to the grid. <coughs> Instead of net metering, since they have now virtual billing, so that allows us to be able to f afford and finance net zero solar on the site, which means that if you produce more, you get credit for the time frame that you don't produce, like during night and so forth. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. They are very excited about the project. Too. You know, they would like to see uh, some of these. Um, you know, need for energy supplied by renewable mm -hmm. because they do have the renewable portfolio standard requirements for the state that X percent of their, uh, you know, production should come from renewable. And, and thank you for the clarification on my question to you. Uh, is there any member of the public that has any question? <coughs> well, I look right at you. So if you yeah. could please join come, us over, come, here. Come over here. That way they get you on camera. I wanted to make sure KD had an opportunity to. Express. Kate Apercolor, Raleigh resident. Um, my question, is, and Roseanne sent me an answer, but I think we need to uh, fully vet this for the public. I understand this project when it is fully, Roseanne, I have to quote your, okay. fully did, and it will receive an exemption for property tax. Not when it's fully completed, when this first phase okay. is complete. So right now it's unimproved property, vacant land. Right now, the property owner uh, is paying taxes on the property, which today we confirmed is $15,000 a year. Uh, and from that $15,000 amount, the city receives 28% of the property tax that's, that is collected. So we receive currently $4,200 a year in property taxes uh, associated with this, this particular parcel. When it's improved... Uh, the this particular portion uh, we anticipate just looking at the other Chelsea projects that are in the surrounding area they are currently valued at the eight to nine million dollar assessed valuation and because of the nature of the property ownership which is a limited partnership with a uh, nonprofit managing partner 
they can apply annually for a tax exemption from property taxes. As a rule of thumb, the property tax represents 1% of assessed valuation, and of that 1%, the city receives 28%. The bulk of it goes to school districts and then the other taxing entities, Brawley Elementary School District Brawley, uh, for bonds, Brawley uh, Elementary School District, High School District, Pioneers Memorial Healthcare District, and Imperial Valley College. So the tax exemption would only be from the city, not from the other entities? No. No, it would be from all of them. No, it would be for all of the entities. Of so the, the schools entities. would not receive any tax? Uh, uh, correct. They would pay uh, school fees at the time that the project uh, pulls its building permits, just like impact fees are, are paid. And I guess my bigger question is, how can Mr. and Mrs. Percola apply for this exemption? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Become a non uh, There is one exception to the assessment, which I learned today for the other Chelsea property, and speaking with Mr. Menville, who was very accessible and helpful to the city of Brawley today with some last-minute questions. Uh, the mosquito abatement fee is the one thing that is successfully uh, uh, secured on a going-forward basis, and it represents, uh, I think it was $3.74 in two installments. Could we make it four? <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, thank you very much uh, for the comment. So just for my own uh, amusement here, and, and maybe that's the wrong word to use, but um, uh, of the, let's say, if, for example, it was a $9 million assessment, 1% of that would be 90000 and from that we would receive 28%. Correct. So that would be essentially twenty-five, a little over $25,000 a year if it were valued at $9 million. So. I mean, if you look at your current payment, 4200 you know, even if you get paid 100 years the same amount versus the cash today upon, you know, c closing all this construction financing for this project would be materially... The, the 1.25 million yeah. you're referring to? Yeah. And impact fees up front, yeah. Yeah. you know, over it, time, you know. I mean, if, if it's appropriate, Mr. Mayor, and, and these are good, you know, I think they're all good questions, all for our, uh, obviously, understanding, but... Um, it's also a reminder that it, it, it's been vacant for all these years, sure. you know, it, it's currently vacant and the only other hope would be um, some private enterprise coming in and building a similar project completely for profit and then you would have, you know, some yeah, tax, you taxes. know, tax and um, Certainly. income to realize off that. But other than that, um, we have plenty of inventory and plenty of vacant land, plenty of places where those can continue to develop. So to me, again, it's always that question that we're faced with is, um, if this project weren't to be successful or proceed, then what would that land do? It'd probably continue to sit vacant. That would be my guess. So, very well. Is there any additional questions from council? If not, I will call for. Uh, public of course, okay. please. Um, this project, uh, very similar to many uh, projects Chelsea has done throughout the valley and other areas, and they've made a science out of partnering with cities, counties, <clears throat> and nonprofits, which is basically their own nonprofit, as you know. But that's an existing law. Um, there's nothing really we can do, but what I'm most concerned about is that as more development comes, you still have not put into place a proper impact development fee, which, which should benefit our city as well. Developers who are coming are making more than enough money now as we come. Housing has risen, again, beyond what really is the market in Imperial Valley, I feel. It's not gonna impact the, uh, the price of homes, Homes that were selling for four hundred thousand dollars years ago <laughs> went down to below two hundred thousand. <clears> then you guys didn't want to uh, implement impact fees and water fees because you don't want to hurt the housing market. Housing is back up, as we know. Past three hundred, way too much for houses here. I feel. And um, as we stated years ago, I was on a planning commission that uh, proposed this particular uh, implementation of fees, which have not been implemented now, so nothing's been implemented since 2013, that's four years ago, maybe going on five, um, housing will not be impacted by that impact fee. We need those fees. Uh, we don't want to have a regressive tax like the city of Imperial, which just tremendously raised water uh, rates and sewer rates because they did not properly uh, charge the developers who made millions of dollars, millions and millions of dollars. And the former developers here in Brawley made millions and millions of dollars and leave, left very little for our community. They come in, they build houses, they overcharge, and they don't pay the proper impact fees. So I'm hoping that uh, <clears throat> this project, thank goodness that as you were talking about deferring, they gave the fact, uh, in the backup material, was the fact of when the last ones have been implemented and for actually impact fee not since 2011. So you're talking six years ago. Mm -hmm. So I have another question. Um, 
How long does the study last before you have to pay for another study to put in another? Uh, the study is actually expired at this point, and should a if we moved forward with the phased in um, increases, it's subject to challenge, and we have reason to believe we would be challenged. Right. So, uh, if the city wished to undertake an updated approach, we would begin with updating our capital project lists, which we haven't um, gone to in a number of years because there have not been any resources to perform capital improvement mm -hmm. projects. So we'd need to first update that, then undertake uh, a solicitation to secure a consultant to do a new nexus study. I urge you to do that for the reason that we had to do the same thing the last time because we had not implemented the fees as well from the five. It had lapsed as well. We're way behind uh, on these impact fees. And, and we have uh, argued for and against developers against this um, for the last, about f the last 15 years when everyone has been taking this on. Um, <clears throat> and talking to certain developers who are more honest than others, they tell you it's never the, it's never the city impact fees that, that determines the price. It's all supply and demand. So you have supply and demand working in favor of developers right now. It should also work in favor of the city. And I urge you to get that Nexus study done, and I urge you to start implementing the impact fees and water fees. They, they will be paying much less and making millions also. Uh, and they're paying less on property tax. Uh, they have a good track record of building good homes that people have taken care of, I, I understand that. But we need those fees for our city to move forward. And we don't want a regressive tax <coughs> where you're charging the, the rest of the community for what you weren't able to uh, receive up front from developers who will make millions of dollars. Thank you. Mr. Reyes, thank you for your comment. <coughs> Any additional comments from the public? If not, I would call uh, for the question, is there a motion to approve the item? Uh, before us, 4B, with the changes that were uh, discussed on the resolution. So, so moved. moved. Oh. So moved. There, there's, a, second. there's a motion. There's a second. Council Member Couchman. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for the discussion. The next item on the agenda is 4C, discussion and staff direction regarding collab correspondence dated December 1st, 2017. It's on page 31 of the backup. And it's a, it's a letter from collab with respect to um, uh, Essential Air Service and their desire for uh, Bra the city of Brawley elected and staff to make every effort to utilize um, their services whenever possible to keep that service alive and operational um, through Mokalele here in uh, Imperial County. Is there any additional comments uh, from city staff? Regarding this item? Not at this time. Uh, we added uh, the item at uh, Council Member Nori, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Kessner Howdegi's request. Um, should, should the Council wish for us to do so, we could develop a resolution that comes back to the Council for more formal action. If you'd like to provide some parameters to include in that resolution, we'd be happy to craft something and then you could continue to refine it if you'd like, or simply you could uh, go on the record today with a vote. Uh, Ms. K. Procola, any additional comment on this item? I know we, this is not the first time I've heard of this. And so I guess, I guess what would they like from us? Sure. Kate A. Procola, Executive Director of Colab. Get to wear lots of hats. <laughs> um, the reason that we wrote this letter, uh, we have some concerns that essential air service funding by the federal government is at jeopardy. We are one of five cities in, in California, I'm sorry, we're one of four in California to still receive this funding. One of the components is they have a, uh, a passenger load they must have every year. We did not make it last year because Seaport pulled out and we were without service for four months. Mm -hmm. So we are the, the, the airline is doing well, but we're below numbers. So if the federal government looks at this, and we have a waiver right now, but when we're at a full 12 months, if we do not make our numbers, uh, the airline could lose its funding. And they've said they will not leave here. They like it being here, but they will move the service from Los Angeles to Burbank. And that is a problem for the community. Certainly. Yes, it is. Because Burbank's a lovely, cute little airport, but you can't make connections from there 
anywhere other than JFK. Right. So we then start driving back to San Diego. So we just want to make a concerted effort and bring it to all of the officials who do travel to, to try very, I understand your time constraints, sometimes the schedule doesn't work, but make it a priority when you can. So that's all we're asking. It's a public awareness. Certainly. And, and okay. for those of you who, ha who have uh, traveled via Mukulele, it's, it's a great service. Um, I've used it multiple times, and the subsidized portion of it uh, going from Imperial County to LAX and back, it's less than a hundred bucks, at least for me, you know, to go round trip. So it's it's a great, you know, it, it's with the flight. new gas tax. It's probably cheaper. No, no, certainly. And then uh, the time, you know, you know, you're able to get some work accomplished without having to drive. So I think we're all willing to support it. Uh, would we? Would you like a resolution? Would you like for us to just go on record that we support it? Or, or does staff want motion? direction from us that it should be a priority that we all travel on this airline if we're going for city business or whatever? Certainly. Yeah, that we set it, it as a priority. Are undertaken to right. utilize the local, uh, local service. Provider. Yeah. Whenever, 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 whenever possible. Whenever practical and whenever possible. Pro yes. Certainly. I think that's the way we should. That's not always possible, of course, but certainly any time it's practical and possible, yes. I think it would so be So that good. way staff knows that they, when they make our travel arrangements, that would be a priority for us. Yeah. Okay. I think any additional good. comments? I think maybe for the, <clears throat> for the public certification, it, there should probably be a comparison made, as, as Mrs. Percola was, was about to make, uh, between what we might spend for mileage or for, for a rental car compared to using Mokaledi. Sure. And, and it's... Free parking at the airport, sure. which is also a much Expensive, better... Expensive, certainly, yeah. Much better locally yeah. in that you don't pay anything yeah. for right. parking. They yeah. charge uh, Sam Couchman for parking. Everybody, <laughs> everybody else parks for free, so... I, I, I put on my leather helmet yeah. and my guards <laughs> and my silk All right, scarf. well, uh, did you need uh, additional direction? No. Huh? Okay, thank no. you. Thank All you. right. And thank you, Ms. Percola, for coming up. Yes. And thank thanks, Kitty. Okay. And the next item is 4D. It is not required at this time. Not required okay. at this time. Next item on the agenda is City Council Member Reports, and we'll start with uh, Mr. Hamby, Council Member Hamby. Uh, <clears throat> not a lot to report, I guess. Um, I went to a, uh, an art gathering at DS Arts. Um, what night was that, George? That was uh, we Saturday, Saturday, Saturday night. night. Saturday night, Saturday. as several of you did. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was neat to see. I have not gotten to see the light display at uh, Billy Handigus's house yet. So oh, I did. I have. You have. Well, I'm his neighbor. Spectacular. <laughs> I have to drive by it every amazing. evening. I went by the other night and turned on the radio, and I there was nothing happening. So I have to try to go back by. Yeah. There's people parked there all the time. Uh, they park out there. Is that your report then? Uh, I got to meet with uh, Mayor Nava this morning for coffee and to discuss uh, city business, and that was appreciated. We got we did a little drive around town to see some of our challenges and uh, some of the hopes that we have for the improvement of town. Um, and I guess I'll leave it at that. That's that's about it. I've been very busy in other places, but that's sure. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Council Member Hamby. Appreciate your report. Council Member, how do you? Okay, since our last meeting, I think all, uh, most of us were able to do the three events in one night, which was a record breaker for me, and I think some of us. Uh, uh, we did the annual tree lighting, which was beautiful and well attended, and we did the mixer at the Community Valley Bank, and then we ran over to the Angel Tea Party, and Marjo, I apologize for being late because I know we missed part of the presentation, so next year we'll do better planning. <laughs> <laughs> and try not to have three things on one night. But um still all got three. the tamales though. Yeah, yes. the tamales were good. <laughs> and and you did a really good job, outstanding job, as always. Yeah. And uh then on the sixteenth on Saturday, um some of us also uh, like Luke mentioned, we attended the they called it the Christmas Art Market and Holiday Cheer. Uh, it was hosted by Bill and Deb Smurden at uh, DNS Art Studio, and I have two grandkids that attend her class, so I was, I'm always really happy to support her, and uh, she does fantastic work and with the kids, and it's amazing, you know. I, I never thought my, I, I, I'm not artistic, so I'm kind of surprised that I have two grandkids that are really, really artistic, so I look forward to the gifts that are coming. <laughs> 
Um, but it was a, a very nice uh, presentation, and we were able to buy a few things from her art studio, which was great. And um, that's about it. I just uh, I think this is our last this is our last meeting before Christmas, so I just want to wish everyone, all the staff, and everyone a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and everyone be safe out there, whatever you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much, uh, Council Member Howdy, Council Member Couchman. Okay, I attended the three events: the tree lighting, the chamber mixer at CVB, and the Angel Tea. I also uh, attended a community technical ed um, career technical education meeting at Brawley Union High School, uh, and that's a meeting where I represent the city, but I also represent renewables, uh, going to the high school and looking over their career and technical education. And for those of you that don't know it. For a while there, shop classes and what we call shop education and, and career education kind of ended at the high schools for a period of years there. It's actually made a comeback now. And if you go to Brawley Union High School and you get an opportunity to visit the shop classes, um, both the wood shop, uh, the welding class is a, is a great class. The wood shop has a lot of modern equipment in it. Uh, they have an electrician uh, or electrical type class uh, based upon somewhat on renewables for residential. Uh, and they have a culinary class now, which has got modern equipment, a moder pretty much a modern setup. So it, it's a great program also. And there, there are a few others over there that they also do. I think they're doing a law enforcement one, and they're doing some other ones over there. I got to visit four or five of those uh, the other day, and they do, uh, they do very, very well. Uh, so SHOP is back. You know, they, they do... That they do career education for those that may not be going to college right away or those that may choose not to go to college and also for those that want uh, some type of uh, career technical education background but also may be going to college so there's there's a lot of that built in so uh, they do a fine job over there at Brawley Union High School and, and I and I sit on one of their advisory boards for that uh, I also had the, went to the DS arts thing on Saturday that was a neat little event over here across the street at a building in our downtown area which has really been uh, redone and, and is, is a great thing I think for Brawley and it looks really good and they're still working on it I think and um, and they'll be doing some other things with other buildings and that's Mr. Handigas I think that owns that mm -hmm. and so he's he's working on that but the but the art class over there is great they have a gym next door to that I think and they have some other things that are ongoing over there I also went to I had the pleasure of being asked to judge the the Ricochet Karaoke Contest on us uh, on was it Friday, off the I walls think. or no? Friday night. Uh, no, it was a karaoke. Con I think they asked me to judge because I can't sing. Mm. I so say, naturally, as a judge of singing, judge. because I can't sing, and so I, I made a perfect judge for those that were attempting to sing the karaoke. I had about twenty-five entries, Jeez. and and we chose you know first, second, and third. It's a difficult process. I don't like being a judge <laughs> for those types of contests because you have to tell people they didn't win, you know, and that, that can be a problem. But uh, it was a real neat event. We had a lot of fun. I did that. I had the pleasure of doing that with um, Arnold's, Arnold's brother. Um, and uh, No, the other. Mariano? Yes, Mariano. 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 Mariano uh, Arnold. Arnold. Valdez's uh, brother and some other people from the community uh, joined me in doing that judging. I think we had four judges, but it was a great event. So with that, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I, I do appreciate all the work that the city staff does around the city. I see it every day. Thank you. Did you judge like on the voice with a button in a chair like you turned it around? Or oh, no? one thing I, well, yeah, but one thing I forgot to say is um, the, the people from uh, Parks and Rec, uh, Miguel, Miguel, came, Miguel Perez came over to uh, the uh, Rotary Club and gave a presentation yes. on the That's parks right. to the Rotary Club. Oh, yeah. It was one of the first times he had done, I think, a public presentation. I thought he did a fine <laughs> job, and Good. it gives you a different perspective talking to somebody that actually is there every mm -hmm. day kind of working on the parks and everything, and he did a fine job with that. Rosanna attended also, and the other lady Linda from... Linda Self. Linda Very Self good. from the Parks and Rec. So, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Couchman. And I'm glad that you brought up that rotary presentation. Thank you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mayor Pro Tem Wharton. Mr. Mayor, mine will be a little shorter because I was the missing uh, council member because I participated in the Interstate 8 closure uh, okay. on the night of the um, <laughs> Angel T. So I missed out on tamales. I missed out on the trio of events. Um, I did get in later that evening. I was able to make the basically the midway to tail end of the Imperial County Medical Society annual Christmas um, um, uh, dinner that they uh, is hosted at the Stockman's Club. 
Uh, <coughs> also, I may or may not have been seen in Imperial at their Christmas on Maine. Mm -hmm. um, just putting that out there. It's always interesting to rub elbows actually with our fellow council members down there, the different jurisdiction. Um, and uh, outside of that, um, I do, um, I did participate in the House of Bread Ministries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know he put the um, invite out to council. It was a little bit earlier in the morning, but uh, it was the bike giveaway. It's their annual gift and bike and, and, and outreach to uh, the greater community. And uh, it was very actually well attended and always well conducted. So great to be part of that. Um, kind of more in my professional life, we were able to raffle off a, a helicopter ride. Uh, for an excited family, um, mom, dad, uh, it seemed like a, um, a few of the kids uh, found out they're going to go up and uh, take a look at their house and their neighbor's house from mm -hmm. a thousand mm -hmm. feet. So bring your camera. Um, so excited about that. Um, it was uh, been a great season so far. So I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy uh, uh, New Year, and a safe and blessed holiday um, to everybody within not only the city, uh, but your friends, family, of our staff, and all that uh, we come in contact with. So um, we always need to reflect. We're very fortunate that we live in the town we live in with the people that we live uh, with and uh, count those blessings because, uh, you know, tomorrow's not promised to everybody. So, again, yeah. thank you. I, I'll keep it uh, very brief. I did participate at many of the same events, House of Bread Ministries, DS Arts. I also uh, went to the Star Wars event uh, with the Film Commission. That was well attended, and we got some good coverage there uh, for the Film Commission, the work that they do, and, and had other meetings, uh, ICTC and others, and uh, representing the city of Brawley. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but I do want to thank everybody um, for all their work throughout the year and for council's support uh, throughout the year. Look forward to 2018. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Uh, be safe. Uh, take care of yourselves uh, and enjoy your time with your family and your friends. So um, thank you all. And we'll move on to the city manager's report. I have two brief items. Uh, we will be coming to you at the meeting in January with some information on an upcoming strategic planning meeting uh, that the library will be uh, convening along with the library commission. Um, at the request of the library, our uh, council member Donnie Wharton will be uh, offering his facilitation skills as he has in some of our strategic planning discussions as council. Um, all of the council is welcome to attend and participate, although Mr. Wharton will be working as the facilitator. Uh, I'm sure he'll figure out yeah. <laughs> uh, how to, to bring uh, forward his ideas as a part of that process as well. And uh, Marjo will be uh, working with uh, Council Member Wharton to define the goals of the strategic planning uh, session. The Library Board of Trustees is different from the other boards in that they actually have a, uh, a formalized role in oversight of the library operations and as they've looked at the changing uh, revenue horizon and staffing needs we have some vacancies over there they're they're going to be using this as an opportunity to evaluate where we are today where we might be in the future and how we can most effectively utilize uh, the resources we have to continue to make both the main branch and branch library available to the community um, I also want to note, um, I, I did receive council direction at a prior council meeting regarding city council norms and procedures and a desire to move forward a discussion on a future agenda. Wanted to ask the council if you would like that to occur in, at one of the January meetings. And also whether um, I have, have had some contact with, with each and every one of you relative to what the norms and procedures are, what might be some areas for further development. Um, the two specific areas that have been brought to my attention have to do with the mayoral rotation as well as um, kind of the, the expectations for information sharing as it pertains to new businesses and ways to improve the communication across the council and um, both among council members and between council members and with, with staff and how staff might be able to help information flow. So um, having noted those two areas, there most certainly might be others. If the council wants to simply have scheduled a discussion, that's one way it could be accomplished. If the council wanted to, at a future date, consider an ad hoc committee that works to flesh out, staff can, can uh, join you to be supportive of preparing documents, or you could do it without staff and then come back and report out to the council. I, I thought it might be helpful to receive some direction from you as to what you'd like that to look like. Any comments from council with respect to this uh, request from our city manager? Is there a desire for ad hoc or simply bring back the existing norms and procedures? Why, why don't we bring, we start with the norms and procedures at 
if it's not the next council meeting, the meeting after that, would that be appropriate or? The January 3rd agenda is looking pretty light. Okay. Best case, we have the Victoria uh, Ranch final map. Uh, and closed session is expected to be lengthy. We'll have our annual uh, JPI claims review and our uh, uh, the staff from California Joint Powers Insurance Authority will be right. present and available to review our uh, items in closed session. Mr. Mayor, just sure. an idea, this just came, the idea of if we do um, maybe put an ad hoc committee a point two, um, and we can do that, let's say we, we on the third. So the next meeting come so up, we'll, to, we'll uh -huh. work to a point. And then maybe we bring those findings to our first maybe strategic workshop. Maybe that's an area that we can do a, a, so push a, a it to more spring. of a... What, what, is April that usually is in our, February? I thought that's in February. We do mid-year budget review is our starting point, and normally okay. that's February. Okay. And then we follow with strategic planning, general fund yeah. workshop. Maybe during the mid-year budget review? But maybe yeah. um, during the... Okay. As I said, that those are tend to be extended meetings. Sure. We have more time. We come in a little okay. bit earlier that's also... True. Uh, homework, vetting, due diligence, whatever can be done by the ad hoc committee, so it gives plenty of time, so we're not trying to come up with uh, um, maybe suggestions just in two weeks or, sure. or three weeks. Any other know. comments That's my on that item? Well, I, I'm, I'm a little, okay, so on the ad hoc committee, are we going to um, appoint or ask for volunteers to serve on the ad hoc committee, or how, how are we going to do that, and when? It'd be at your pleasure. Well, yeah, appointment I think by what council. is being proposed by Councilmember Wharton is to place an action item where you, uh, the council names ad for, hoc for committee the, For our for next January. meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the other item um, that you talked about, um, actually is something that I shared with Rosanna. I, for lack of a better term, I kind of would call it a council interaction report, is what I proposed. Um, and that's just for better communication amongst the council, primarily about what's happening as far as new businesses in, in the city, and to make sure that everyone's aware of everything that's going on so there's no, you know, nothing going on that I would come blindly to a meeting and not know anything about. And so I had uh, proposed to Rosanna maybe um, a council interaction report, which would be in information only. So there wouldn't be, a, there would be no violation of the Brown Act because it would just be information that would be shared. Um, <coughs> my thinking is like maybe a bi-weekly report, but maybe in the off week when we're not meeting to kind of give us an opportunity to uh, review whatever is on that bi-weekly report and, and you know, either uh, discuss it with other council or with Rosanna. But I don't know if that particular item needs to be part of this ad hoc or but what I'm, I'm, something for clarification purposes, you're looking for a report written by who? By Rosanna. By city staff? No, by Rosanna to our to the council. To the council. It's, um, a, it, it's a council interaction report. Uh, as an example, um, let's say that I call, and because I know this happens all the time, that I have a conversation with Rosanna about something that I heard or did or met with, and I share it with Rosanna, but I don't have the opportunity to share it with all of you because I don't see you. Sure. So I think it's important that we all get that the all that information that comes from the various council members, and then she would share that information with all of us in writing. Well, well, so well. so city council would report to Rosanna with anything. It's you've just done? conversations like that we that we have already. I mean, normally I think we do share with her if, as an example, um, let's say that I uh, I talk to a prospective uh, business person that's interested in uh, opening a business or there's something going on, an issue with a business, and I talk to Rosanna about it, but I don't have an opportunity to talk to all of you. Hmm. So then that would, yeah, and then that, that, that way all of us would have the information. Because my experience hmm. has been that sometimes that's happened, I, and, uh, and I think it's a perfect time now that we have a new council member on board that um, I sometimes, and it's not due to, I don't think any, uh, any malice or, or forgetfulness or whatever it may be, but um, sometimes I felt like I didn't know exactly what was going on with certain things. And I think that this would probably be helpful in, in ensuring that everyone has the information, True. the same information. Yeah. I mean, I have dozens of interactions, so I mean, I, I, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, and, and, I I, and because you're the mayor, you know, a lot of times that's, yes. that's true, that happens. Even when I'm not. I mean, but, it, it yeah, but you've been, and you've been on the council for a lot longer, so a lot of the people in the community naturally will call you. Sure. But we're at a disadvantage, or I have been at a disadvantage because I was the newest council <laughs> member and didn't, didn't have that information. And that would probably help Luke also to be in the 
in the know, mm. you might say. I mean, so Mayor, just an idea. I, I don't know. Might what I suggest think. just I, I think a good opportunity because um, it could it could also even if it's not directly part of norms and procedure, it's still kind of a, a council process that you're mm -hmm. you're, you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. I, I would think that that could also be taken up with if we do appoint an ad okay. hoc committee, and then it gives us ample time to talk it through. You know, in terms of what the current state is of communication. Um, and then and then bring those findings back to council so we can you know, and, discuss and, it. and I would remind council that is the reason we have the city council member report section in our agenda that is a time when we're supposed to discuss you know the interactions that we have as individuals and and you know not every interaction is is a, a council action item and not every interaction is one where it's uh, it could just be a conversation you had with somebody you know that that is uh, looking to expand their business or looking at doing something so but that is the reason we do have the city council member report. It's not just to report, you know, I went to this event or went to this event. So just yeah. for further consideration. Well, my, <laughs> unfortunately, well, fortunately or not, but the past, in the two years that I've served, um, that's pretty much been it. I mean, we basically report on the things that, that we've attended. We haven't <coughs> really reported on other things that um, possibly uh, would have enhanced our participation and with dealing with uh, new businesses, uh, or no, just knowing, just just knowing right. that a particular business is, or, or uh, potential owner is thinking about opening a business, because I would go out to uh, mixers and things and felt like I didn't know uh, that that was even happening. Mm -hmm. You know. So, so, Mr. Mayor, I, I think again, it, we, let's let's uh, definitely let's have that discussion. I, I my my thought is. Um, put the ad hoc and if we don't want to go ad hoc we can discuss it you know here as well but I think it might re require some further you know a little deeper dive right. sure um, so let's have an opportunity to do that and I, I would highly suggest we're not to make that decision tonight but maybe on the third um, allow um, council member how to to help lead that you know mm -hmm. um, ad hoc committee I mean I personally I don't see anything negative in it I just think it's a it's a good way of communicating and and yep. there's and transparency you know yeah, with sure. our council I just I don't want to burden our city manager with additional reporting and that's the other item you know I know that we request a lot of information from our city manager um, and you know we always have the opportunity to interact as council members you know with, with respect to, to conversation that is open you know there is no violation of the Brown Act whenever you have a conversation as long as you're not making uh, decisions on action items that are on the agenda or future agenda <coughs> items but um, I would just encourage in addition to what we can do as an ad hoc committee to, to open up the conversation and make sure that there's heavy interaction amongst council members. Um, in the meanwhile, I will try my best. I, in the last she few updates that I've been sending out, I'm trying to include kind of a, a snapshot as, as business license applications are initiated. In a perfect world, it's the first step that business uh, starts with. I want to open a business, I'm coming down and I'm turning it in and it kicks off all of the processes inside of the city. Sometimes it follows at the very, very tail end after all the work is done, then they get the business license. Right. But in the perfect world, it starts at the beginning. And I'm trying to capture for you mm -hmm. uh, with the help of the finance department. Every time a new application makes its way in the door, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm uh, batching them and getting them to you as quickly as possible. I'm always open to feedback if I'm flooding you with too much information. I'm always worried it's that never I'm flooding enough for me. you with me too much details. Too much information. <laughs> um, and, and also kind of figuring out the tolerance for do you want to know um, the things that have potential conflict or do you want to just know a snapshot, this is what's mm -hmm. happening. Because I'm trying to give you lots of layers so that you're not taken by surprise. And I, I really want to make sure all of you have access to the sure. exact same information. So the reason the, the status that's updates go out, out, that's the goal. And I, right. I sometimes they get really lengthy, and I, I'm sure. Understood. And okay. I would say yeah. this, though. With respect to, to interacting with business owners and those that are prospective business owners, not all of the information they share with us, they want to be made yeah. public. So, no, that's you know, understood. That, yeah. that, that's, that's the true. other sure. element of it. If, so. they re if they request that and not be shared, then I understand that completely. But, you know, I think it's, it, yeah, I'm not talking about those particular cases. Right. Right. 
So, uh, uh, any other items on the uh, from the city manager? Uh, the last item I wanted to to, to wish everybody a very happy uh, set of holidays. The new year starting and lots of uh, f fresh new starts. And um, also welcome back Captain Eloy Martinez and his crew, mm -hmm. along with our fire chief. They looked exhausted today. Wow. Yeah, I would imagine so. <laughs> <laughs> exhausted. We had a fresh crew go up, uh, which is Captain Ish. Benias and his shift. Uh, along with many other uh, Valley personnel were yeah. sent up to refresh everybody. Uh, we are fully expecting that they will be there uh, yeah, in service so through the holidays, and we hope you keep all of, all of them in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Our city manager uh, also serves as a city manager, excuse me, our, our city attorney also yeah. serves as a city attorney for uh, the city of Calipatria, and uh, he's not able to attend our meeting today because they're going through a 218 process. Um, and so uh, it's a public hearing process for increased rates. Um, so he's there uh, serving in that capacity. So he apologized for not being able to attend. Um, we'll forgive him this time. So. Yeah. All right. City clerk's report. Reminder, <coughs> excuse me, um, the Christmas party at Hidalgo this Thursday from 6 to 8. Hmm. Okay. It's on your calendar. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Merry Christmas to all and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> and there are no closed session items, so we will adjourn. Our next regular meeting will be Wednesday, January 3rd at 6 p.m. Thank you all very much.